Hey there everybody, good morning and welcome to Friday. What is today? May the 31st, last day of the month. Man, can you believe it already? Days, years kind of ripping on by, isn't it? Today, we're gonna put a little feet on our conversation conversations that we've been having this week about decision making. Stay tuned. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week, you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. Hey there, everybody. Good morning and... Welcome back. My name is Tom Rigsby. This is 7 Minutes in the Morning Show where we talk about how to start growing and enjoy the benefits of business ownership and entrepreneurship. And when you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, do as, do as Joe has done and Keith has joined him. Say hi, leave a comment, let me know that you're there. Uh, uh, I think it moved. No, it's still there. But now I've shown you where it was. I was going to say, see if you can find the spider. There's one on the screen back there behind me. At any rate, we're out here on the uh, the uh, back porch office uh, today and working on, I've got a couple of things left to be able to do it, but uh, working on getting some poolside chats going uh, for this summer. So uh, we'll just see how those things go. So, and good morning to you as well, Catherine. So, this week we've been talking about making a change or um, not really decision making as much as just making changes. When changes are necessary, what do you do? And today, um, so our, our quote today um, comes from an unknown, but is still appropriate. Every accomplishment begins with a decision to try. You have to make that decision, right? And so what happens a lot of times is we get stuck on what we think is the decision making process really it's the execution process because in reality we know pretty much like that what the right thing to do is the rest of the time we spend justifying that or just either justifying that action or justifying not taking that action right i mean you ever had that gut feeling like yeah, I know this is the right thing to do, but A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah, you, you come up with all these reasons, constraints, and, and stuff why you can't. So all of that is designed to put off taking the action. There's noises going on. All of that is designed to put off taking the action, right? So we'll do things like, well, my circumstances are unique or well uh, it's really not me it's somebody else I'm dependent on them right you always have a choice so let's talk about three things that you need to do to make a good decision right to, to make a good choice number one you have to know what the outcome is that you're trying to get to <clears throat> uh, there's an example uh, coming up in my uh, blog post today that will be out shortly after I finish the video. But the uh, <laughs> but the example is deciding to leave a dead end job or um, uh, deciding to stay at a dead end job or go out on my own. Right, and so you might instinctively know what the answer to that is, but when we start talking about what's the outcome. There's a lot of thrashing that we can do, going back and forth about whether it's good to stay at this job or it's better to go out on your own or maybe do something in between and never talk about what the outcome is that we're trying to create. And without knowing what that outcome is that you're trying to create, how can you make a good decision? So number one really is knowing what the outcome is that you want. Number two, you have to come up with at least three options. And not actually, let me restate that. With three options, exactly three. Not more, not less, but exactly three options. The reason for three is because if you only have one option, you don't really have a choice. If you have two, then you really have a dilemma. It's not until you get three options that you actually have a choice to make. 
most people get stuck on one or two. Well, I want to do so-and-so, but this is preventing me. That's, that's a two-option outcome. By forcing yourself to think, think through and figure out what that third option is, right? then you think through the problem a little more completely. And it kind of forces you to get outside the constraint you've already added to yourself. Now, no more than three, because then you get into <clears throat> the paradox of choice. You have too many options, so you, you can't make a decision. So three is the perfect number. So we know what the outcome is. We create three options. And then the third step is just which one of these options moves me closer to my goal. In Catherine's case, world domination. Which one of these three choices, these three options, moves me closer to that goal that I define? And then do that. Now, as I said a little bit earlier, it's, not, it's often not the decision that's difficult. We can do that pretty quick. <coughs> Excuse me. It's executing on that decision. But that's going to have to wait for a whole new episode. I will tell you this. I'll give you a good rule of thumb. This is something that I picked up from Tony Robbins. <clears throat> Never leave the scene of a, of a decision without taking action to implement it. Never leave the scene of a decision without taking an action to implement it. We'll talk more about that in coming episodes. But just in, in shorthand terms. Always take an action once you make a decision. So, know the outcome. Three options, choose the one that moves you toward your outcome. That's it. It's not any more complicated than that. It's Friday. It's Friday. That means the weekend's coming up. You should rest, rejuvenate, rest, recuperate, and rejuvenate. And join me back here on Monday for another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Until then, you guys, hey, Abby, power of three, yes. Uh, and, and three is a magic number. All those, three, six, and nine. Tesla said, <clears throat> if we really, if we truly understood the power of three, six, and nine, we could unlock all the secrets of the universe. Three, six, and nine. <clears throat> oh, Keith, <clears throat> that is such a magnificent example. I would look at 20 samples and just go in the other room. Couldn't deal with that. But there, is a, there, there have been a number of studies done, that, and probably the most famous one, I, I can't think of the guy's name that did it right now, but he used a jam on the end caps in a grocery store. And he put one end cap on one side of the store and one on the other. The first one had, um, or one of them, I don't remember the order, but one of them had six jams to choose from, the other one had three. And the one with six, had almost no sales where the one with three um, had much greater sales. So the more options you have, the more difficult it becomes until you just decide to not decide. So three is, is the magic number there. Yeah, choosing carpet. Do you really have to choose from 20? I mean, you, you, get, it. you get the number down less than 20, right? I mean, I'd hate to have to choose from 20. That would drive me nuts. All right. I'm going to wrap it up there. You guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you again on Monday with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning.